everybody and welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. Uh, what I'm going to be presenting today is my 3-speed automatic smoothly changing gearbox design failure. Now unfortunately not all my designs work out the way I thought they would and this week I'm going to be presenting the design process that I used for this particular gearbox design and why it didn't work out the way I thought for a reason that I didn't anticipate. So the design for this gearbox is based on another gearbox that I presented a couple of weeks ago, the two-speed automatically smoothly changing gearbox. And now the core idea of this gearbox is that it uses a differential on the output over here to add together a constant speed from the input and another speed selected by the orange rotary catch selector. And that selector is driven by this differential here which detects the torque on the output. So when there's some torque on the output, that differential will start to rotate and that rotation will drive the uh, orange rotary catch selector to select another speed and then that speed, like I said before, is added onto the output through this differential. So the two speeds that are added onto that uh, initial speed that is driven by the input would be uh, zero from being in the neutral position and in fact a negative speed to reduce the overall output. So that way we end up uh, creating two uh, different speeds. One is when uh, nothing is selected and we end up with a speed of 1 on the output and the other speed would be a lower speed due to the uh, negative speed being selected over here. And this will just demonstrate how this automatic gearbox works in practice. So we'll just connect this motor over here like that and we'll turn it on and we can see the output's rotating and as we put some load on the output it smoothly changes gears from speed 1 to the lower speed number 2. So given how well this particular gearbox worked, I thought it would be a simple matter for extending it to having three automatic speeds. Something that some of my subscribers suggested anyway, uh, it's just a matter of adding an extra gear on this side of the selector. That way we're selecting either between gear 1, a neutral and gear 2, and then adding those through the gearing onto the output differential to create the three uh, different speeds on the output. So that's what I set out to do. So in order to design this gearbox, I first drew the concept on a piece of paper like this. I drew a motor M which would have a speed of 1 going into a summing differential. That summing differential would then go through a torque detecting differential over here, and that would give us our final output. So when there's some loading on the output, that torque uh, differential would start rotating, and that would drive that orange rotary catch, and that rotary catch would select from one of three different speeds. 1, 2, and 3. Uh, the first speed would be something like 0 0.4, and the neutral would just be 0, and then the third speed would be something like minus 0.4. Then that would drive back into that summing differential so that the speed selector would add on to that speed 1 to give us uh, the overall three possible output speeds. So the possible output speeds would be 1 plus 0 0.4, so it would be 1.4. 1 plus 0 gives us 1, and then 1 minus 0.4 is 0 0.6. Now of course this is a simplified version of this diagram, when you sum through a differential uh, it divides by 2 and things like that, but you can offset that with the appropriate gearing at the output. Uh, but the key thing is that the concept is that you have this torque uh, detection select one of three different gears depending on the loading on the output, and therefore adjust the output speed accordingly depending on the uh, gearing you pick for one of these three selections. So this was the overall concept of the gearbox. So I'll just show you how the design relates to the actual implementation. So over here we've got our motor on the left. The motor then drives through that summon differential that we talked about on the diagram over here. Uh, that then passes through into the torque detection differential onto the output. And then once that torque detection detect some torque, it'll rotate the rotary catch and that rotary catch will switch between the three different speeds. So here we've got that speed 1, here we've got neutral which is speed 2, and over here we've got speed 3. As you can see that kind of works like this. Uh, those speeds then get fed back through this um, worm gear, and then that worm gear is to prevent the neutral gear being driven backwards and losing traction. So that's important for that reason. Then that drives back through the gearing on the internals in here and gets added back into that uh, summing differential over there that creates the overall output. So that's how the diagram relates to the actual design. Alright, so after designing this particular gearbox on paper, this is how I built it. Uh, I'll now demonstrate how in practice it didn't work out the way I thought it would. Uh, I actually thought that it's because it's very similar to the two-speed automatic gearbox that it should work no problem. It's a very similar design, it's, even though it's a different layout, 
the design principles are very much the same. So I'll just show you what happened when I first turned it on. It's all looking good. Uh, the output's rotating as expected. Then as I put some loading on the output, you can see the orange rotary catch starting to rotate. And I thought this is great. It's just going to switch. And then more loading I put on. It, in fact, it didn't switch. It just got jammed more and more. Like that. And that was very disappointing. Uh, I tried some different trips to try to fix it, but I couldn't overcome the fundamental issue of that not being able to pull across, have enough force to pull that selector across it reliably. It does sometimes pop across, but generally speaking, it just it just gets stuck. So what was the reason this gearbox didn't work? Well, it turns out it's this culprit here. Uh, as you can see in the demonstration, what happens is that because there's actually what I didn't realize there's a lot of torque on this axle because it's shared with the output uh, probably about two-thirds of the output torque is on this and one-third is on that and it's still sufficient amount of torque when I put loading on it for this uh, clutching mechanism to get kind of jammed inside of the gearing and it actually takes quite a bit of force to pop it out so once there's a bit of torque on that blue gear and, and it's rotating against the uh, selector uh, you can actually see it's kind of quite hard to, to pull out it sort of gets stuck uh, and the um, the torque on the orange rotary catch isn't sufficient to overcome that loading and that's the main reason why my gearbox failed unfortunately uh, I did try some different tricks to alleviate the problem by changing for example some of the gearing and reducing the torque and the speed on this axle but it still wasn't sufficient to overcome this particular problem so yes, this has been a lesson for me uh, in terms of design, like sometimes, you know, when you present videos like this, you present the things that succeed, and quite often you might be wondering why or why isn't this designer using a different technique, and quite often the reason is that those techniques may or may not work. Um, quite often, of course, people only present what works, they don't present what don't work. So I thought today it would be useful to present something that didn't work, uh, it's as, as educational as things that do work. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, got something out of it, and you'll remember that a clutching mechanism does not pull out very easily if there's high load or torque on the um, clutch uh, gears. So thank you for watching, uh, please support this channel by liking and subscribing. We'll see you next time.